That's the Ocelli Effect. Welcome to RealLibertyMedia.com. RLMRadio.xyz. If you're not listening live right now, you're downstream. Come on back. Find the R log. You'll get some links here to hook up. Hey, Chuck, how you doing? Thanks, sir. Welcome aboard. Yeah, doing okay. Hopefully the mute button's working all right. Uh, so, it was yeah, that, uh, that was a little piece of the theme song written for me by Renegade Smith, uh, and that is at the beginning and the end of all my shows, I don't know, for the past thousand or so. <laughs> all right. And, uh... You know, uh, the first the first couple. You remember there was a different uh, different tune, different tone at the beginning, and uh, it was something that I did myself. It was kind of noisy and really oh, messy. Oh, I remember uh, it. Everybody back in the UCY days will remember too. Uh, we've got some uh, some listeners here from that came over from UCY TV here to Real Liberty Media in the chat room, RealLibertyMedia.com dot com channels chat page one PHP. There's uh, right there in the R log. You can uh, you can find it. I've uh, Pre-published the uh, the uh, blog, so Grimner says uh, 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 premature e-publicate, which uh, I came to vin e vin e publication. Yes, can't take it back after you already published it, right? Hey, Moose Girl, she hears a hillbilly. That sound like a hillbilly to you? You're further south than I am. You, you know, you could tell I'm further south than you uh, by my accent, right? Uh, <laughs> no, I definitely uh, retain my northeastern sound, but every once in a while you hear a little something slip in there uh, when we're when we're talking, and you know, you use phrases like uh, "let me let me think about it for a second. I mean, you know, see, you might say "bless their heart" once in a while. Uh, you might ask if uh, somebody's Geez, I don't even I don't even know what it, what the other phrases are. I know it's slipping in, it's creeping in because I'm in the uh, state of Georgia, or at least what used to be the state of Georgia here in the <clears throat> alleged United States. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 been an interesting journey, my friend. I don't I don't think I sound anything like a hillbilly unless those hills are somewhere in I don't know North Jersey. Well, listen, uh, so. we, we're gonna have to get you to <laughs> to practice. We can get you some language lessons, learning to speak American now. There is a, a connection between the uh, the uh, nor'easter, the Bostonian accent, and the southern accent. That's when you want to put an R into a word when it doesn't have one and take it away if it does. <laughs> well, you know, that's true. That's true. But, again, I, I kind of grew up in the New York, New Jersey area, so, you know, it's it's more uh, more attitude than accent, I guess. Hey, forget about but it. All right. Forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so, welcome, everybody, that's in the chat over here. Uh, a couple of chat channels at the Real Liberty Media, uh, Pound Pound, and uh, Politics 360. Big shout out and thanks to Anti and Wanna Taco for uh, giving me some artunication and inspiration in my e publication today. Uh, now, today, Chuck, just Chuck Ocelli for maybe somebody listening that uh, doesn't know who Chuck is, and many of our listeners here do. Uh, He's known as the blind research, uh, the blind JFK researcher, and uh, <laughs> so uh, in here in the R log, you'll you'll be able to click on and, and uh, see some uh, uh, added features here. We've got the I've put some pub, uh, pictures in here, and I'm going to put some more in there. Uh, I shared them from uh, realliberty.org over into the chat here just a little bit earlier uh, on conspiracy back uh, back into the 1960s that Chuck shared with me. So today it is conspiracy theories in the new world order, and uh, that, that's some of the topics we're going to be looking at and discussing uh, the ideas. And I'm just hoping I, I didn't misspell anything there as I'm looking. Anyways, we'll we'll fix all that up anyways down the line. So check out uh, uh, one of the main reasons that uh, that I'm addressing this right here is uh, in partial response to the Bundyville. Uh, podcast part two from Leah Satilli and Ryan J. Haas. Uh, they've done a, uh, well, they've gone after the the low, le the low level fruit there. They've, they've gone to pick that, and so they're not having a hard time really dealing with some of these uh, idiots involved in uh, uh, wanting to uh, bring about events. And so conspiracy, now we can have conspiracy by uh, Obvious criminals, and then uh, those that kind of slip through the cracks, and uh, uh, they come into being, come come to be a part of uh, the way things in the world operate. So when you when you start talking about alternatives to the mainstream ideas, and 
somebody throws tinfoil at you and tells you to build a hat, right? Well, yeah, and that's an interesting thing because, you know, again, the the root words for this and the phrase, a lot of people think it was invented in the 1960s. It wasn't invented in the 1960s, conspiracy theory as a phrase. Um, it, it was invented a lot earlier. I dropped some uh, etymology links to both the words conspiracy and theory in the chat room at, uh, at RLM there uh, just to give people something to look at. Uh, to, to get an idea of where these words come from, what they actually mean. What I focus on in the meaning of the word conspiracy is the word spire, and why? Because, well, if, if we think about the concept of respiration, it is rooted in the idea of repeatedly breathing, repeat well, obviously being the prefix, right, respiration. Uh, you, so you can identify that that word has to do with breathing, and literally the word conspire is uh, to breathe together. Now, not only is this a, a, a proper term, but uh, it's also the more natural condition by which human beings in general uh, collaborate in order to accomplish things of significance. Uh, you breathe together, you work together one way or another. Most people are not lone wolves, even if they're terrorists, they're usually not lone wolves, okay? Doesn't work that way in the real world, never has. Um, so the concept of conspiracy, although it's got negative connotations to it, because the first thing, if you look at it on the etymology page, and almost any of these uh, <coughs> alleged definitions out there, is to uh, give it a negative connotation. Um, it is most commonly used today, really, in, uh, in, in legal practices and properly, because, again, people collude, conspire, and work together, in criminal activities in one way or another. Uh, so many convictions you see that are legitimate in courts of law, which, you know, <laughs> not not everything is legitimate in the court of law, we know this, but fact is that the concept is real. Um, people do things that are in violation of other people's rights, certainly, and they conspire to do that constantly. I contend that the, uh, the government does this a whole lot more often than it's ever charged with, but anyway, this is a, uh, a, a thing that needs to be examined objectively. So then you have the word theory. And if we take a look at where the word theory comes from, even to go back to the Greek, it is basically a matter of assembling a logical uh, process by which something is uh, achieved. And this is what you do based on some observations and also uh, basic logical constructs. So conspiracy theory, although the phrase has been demonized, and although I gave you the document to show you one of the instances in which uh, our intelligence agencies decided to undermine, and if you notice throughout it, uh, there, there's a bunch of mentions of the Warren Commission critics, uh, the individuals who want to question the assassination of John F. Kennedy, and all of that, they're conspiracy theorists. Um, you, you see that, that phrasing right there in that document, and it's uh, meant to be a, a derisive term. Now, is it actually a derisive term in its essence? I don't think so. But uh, what are your thoughts, Vince? Yeah, I'm I'm looking at the uh, I posted those pictures onto the realliberty dot org so that uh, and I'll add that into the to the radio log. Yeah, it says here the the trend of opinion is a matter of concern to the U.S. government, including our organization. The members of the Warren Commission were naturally chosen for their integrity, experience, and prominence. They represented both major parties, and they and their staff were deliberate, deliberately drawn from all sections of the country, just because of the stand. Yeah, I had one place in here particularly I was looking to pull out, but uh, yeah, they 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 uh, set it up to self exclude themselves or excuse themselves uh, in complicity, and uh, they, these people were insiders uh, and and part of the cover up. But it's it's pretty plain to me that there's not much theory involved left in that. It's pretty much fact. Uh, somebody's made well. Several several people, have, uh, Mike in particular, has made a comment about he wishes the word theory would be taken out of that. And some people call it uh, theory or conspiracy factualist. So um, 
Well, right. I, I think of it as conspiracy realism. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but but look, in, in a lot of cases, you do have theory which must fill in the gaps because uh, a lot of known quantities are simply not known. Um, and and therefore, but it's not a dirty word anyway. You start with a theory <laughs> when you're attempting to assemble, you know, a, a set of charges. Once again, we're talking about. Uh, in, in most cases, the things that are identified as conspiracy theory, we are talking usually about something that uh, is somewhat obscured, has been absconded with in some way, either the evidence itself or the activity is conducted under cover in some way or other, which means that uh, intentionally some of it was, you know, not out there in full public view one way or another. Um, and again, I'm trying to be as objective about this as possible, but to me, I don't think you need to remove the word theory. You need to remove the, the, the stigma from the phrase to begin with. Absolutely. Um, you know, because it, it, it is accurate. You require a theory sometimes, and then what you do is, well, you research and you find evidence to fill in that theory with facts. <laughs> you know, as best you can ascertain that facts are reliable and uh, less refutable than others, uh, so on and so forth, you know. Uh, again, also based on logical constructs which are known. Uh, you know, for instance, you would not say that uh, somebody got on their cell phone in 1975 to have a conversation because you would realize that that technology, although it may have existed in some capacity, was not reasonably accessible to the average person. So for the most part, you could dismiss a statement like that, um, you know, b based on the conditions <coughs> under which something is going on, based on a time period, technological advances, the availability. See, th 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 this is not a matter of, you know, just dreaming things up and imagining a story. Although there, there are people that do that out there, and uh, some of them are more inventive than others, and some of them seize upon some facts and fill it in with, uh, with, with you know, nonsense <laughs> yeah. uh, in order to make certain points. And that's usually based on, a, a again, a prejudice, a, uh, a, a story that they will then cherry-pick facts to, uh, to fill in based on the idea that their theory was already contaminated by their uh, predetermination, confirmation and, bias. Yeah, and and indeed that's what we find with the Warren Commission. Um, and and I don't want to belabor the JFK thing too much, but when you take a look at and an, an investigate a special investigation, and they form four committees, okay, and two of them are involved with Lee Harvey Oswald, one of them is involved with figuring out uh, Jack Ruby and what he did, and uh, there is one more committee which is there to ascertain, you know, absolute facts regarding the incident itself and all that. <clears throat> um, none of them actually comes together for the purposes of, well, what? An open investigation, <laughs> right? They have a suspect already. Ridiculous. And, and they did not, you know, sit there and... Uh, deliberate about which suspects they were going to deal with. I mean, Jack Ruby is obvious because uh, it was broadcast live, that murder. Uh, so you, you, you have kind of uh, an easy-to-work-with pool of suspects there. Right. Uh, as for who his conspirators could be, as for uh, who could work with him, well, that's, that's a whole <coughs> other issue. But uh, as we well know, the Warren Commission determined that uh, both Ruby and Oswald acted of their own volition without any assistance from anyone else until the late 70s, in which case the official government conclusion now conc uh, contains two conclusions where Lee Harvey Oswald is still involved, but uh, to a uh, 93 or 98% certainty, I forget which is which, because the House Select Committee on Assassinations looked at Dr. King's assassination and Jack Kennedy's assassination and uh, to a 93% plus certainty in both cases, one is 98%, one is 93%, uh, determined that it was as a result of a conspiracy. And that's in the official record as well, although it was never followed up on, right? Pretty cut. Anyway, um, 
But but see the thing is though that the the idea that people that uh, participate in this in a responsible way have sought to utilize their own confirmation bias because they believe that uh, someone of significance could not be cut down by someone who is not of significance like a Lee Harvey Oswald, then they're inventing a story which is different than being a conspiracy theorist, really. Yeah, uh, uh, When you objectively look at the term, when you're inventing a story to explain away the unexplainable, that is a uh, that that is the practice of generating mythos or mythology uh, in order to explain the unexplainable, and that is what they basically turn the concept of conspiracy theorists into is being the authors of mythology, um, which, you know, I, I'm not saying that there aren't people that are not authors of mythology out Lydia. there, but uh, for the most part, that is not actually true. Well, more and more, I think it may be becoming true, because to, uh, to discredit factual theories, then you have to uh, throw in the mix the, uh, the nutters. Right. And uh, some people are intentionally implanted into the Certainly. communities, <laughs> quite honestly. And uh, there, there are others who just have uh, poor uh, thought processes, <laughs> you know, who have um, ascended because they have an attractive story uh, for one reason or another. You know, it's, uh, it, it's very good to, for instance, blame a guy like Lyndon Johnson because we know factually that uh, that he was one of these criminal presidential, you know, uh, uh, office holders, <laughs> and um, pretty bad so, guy. Yeah, I mean, a guy who provably took bribes, a guy who was being investigated, uh, even as vice president, uh, a guy who, uh, you know, by 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 many many accounts, stole elections directly in Texas, uh, a guy who uh, has had grand jury testimony given that stated that uh, he was responsible directly for the murder of several people, including his own sister. Um, you know, that, that would be Billy Celestes, and, you know, I question the validity of his statements, because Billy Celestes was, a, uh, was an admitted con man, but still, grand jury testimony uh, is on the record there stating that he indeed was involved in, in the murder of, uh, again, several people, uh, including uh, Josepha Johnson, his sister, like I said. Um, I have a uh, hypothesis yeah. that if uh, uh, the, the uh, governor of Texas, John Conley, wasn't his name, uh, I bet if he has ever exhumed that uh, that bullet will have gone missing that was in his uh, in his arm. Well, here, here's the here's the rub about that. Um, the the reason why that's significant at all is because the the, the magic bullet itself, right? Yeah. Uh, the thing that everybody points to that uh, is not missing very much lead at all uh, is apparently responsible, according to the official story, for, uh, what, seven wounds in Connolly? <laughs> and lead, uh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, well, he here's the thing. This bullet, according to the official story, had to have entered in the back of JFK's neck, exited his throat, entered the back of uh, John Connolly somewhere... Um, you know, uh, in the mid-back area, destroyed one of his ribs, exited uh, out just under his right nipple, entered the, uh, the, the portion of his wrist where the bones come together and the radial nerve is present, smashed the wrist bone, uh, severed the radial nerve, exited the wrist, and entered into his leg, bouncing off of his thigh bone. Okay, and coming back out of the wound and ending up in his pants when they were cutting them away because they had to take him right away to surgery. His lung had collapsed and his life was in danger after being wounded so badly. Uh, and the fact is that uh, they find this, this bullet almost undamaged a little while later on a stretcher. Uh, and, and they claim that that is the bullet that actually was the fatal shot which killed Kennedy and wounded Connolly pretty severely. Uh, like I said, it severed, severed the radial nerve, which is the uh, uh, a, a nerve in the wrist which allows you to utilize your thumb, um, which uh, is, is a strange thing when you take a look at the Zabruder film and he's still holding his cowboy hat with that hand. 
Um, but but anyway, th this is what is alleged to have happened, right? So uh, there was bits of lead left in John Connolly's wrist, and with a lot of bullet wounds, you'll find that there are trace amounts of a bullet which are left behind, even uh, in the case of fully jacketed military ammunition, which this allegedly was, uh, you will still have a little bit of, um, you know, uh, some elements of the bullet left behind, especially when they're striking bone and things like this. Um, now, they don't splinter into little pieces usually, although the other bullet which ends up in the car is shattered into a whole bunch of different pieces. Um, anyways, back to it. Here's the deal. Uh, if you add together the very, very small amount of lead which would be missing based on the uh, manufacturer's specs on that, on that piece of ammunition and the idea that something, <coughs> anything equating to more than a postage stamp worth of metal had remained in John Connolly in some way or another, then, uh, then you have the, uh, the government's evidence absolutely being false regarding the bullet. Um, so when John Connolly died, a request was made to his, uh, his widow. Can we please extract the lead from your husband's body, which was present and did, in fact, set off metal detectors uh, and things like that for the rest of his life? Um, Nellie Connolly did not allow it. And so John Connolly was buried with uh, bits of the alleged bullets still in him, and we still don't have the ability to line it up. And meanwhile, like I said, if it struck Kennedy, hit no bone whatsoever, which is a difficult path to take, uh, even by the official account, uh, and then struck all these bones in Connolly's body and left not enough lead behind to, uh, to make up for the fact that just a touch was missing from this bullet, uh, you, you know, then automatically we know that that's not the bullet that could have done the damage. Period. Right. You know, and, and that's what's interesting about it. So he probably was buried with uh, bits and pieces of that piece of ammunition. I, I would contend that somebody, <laughs> somebody pulled it out be, before he went into the ground. I, I don't think it's there. Ever, if well, ever he's ex exhumed, then uh, it will not be found. Well, you know, we, we, we could speculate about that all day, and wouldn't that be interesting uh, if they exhumed him and they found nothing in there because we know that just based on uh, public knowledge that there was metal still in his wrist uh, at the very least. And, and who knows if there had been remains of uh, that bullet left in the, uh, in the abdominal cavity in the area where it had to pass through and smash a rib. <laughs> you know? Right. So... So I guess that's not even a hypothesis, right? What's before that? Making a wild leap of faith and guessing. <laughs> well, if you assume that you know there's nothing, nothing to see there, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you are a conspiracy theorist, <laughs> and uh, but, but quite frankly, I'm talking to you about the, the forensic reality. Yeah. See, again, I'm looking at the conditions. Does it make any logical sense that a bullet that's missing? Uh, the equivalent of weight from it that is a postage stamp had smashed all those bones and not <clears throat> fragmented in any significant way to leave more than a postage stamp behind between the two victims, mind you. Okay. Uh, and still, <laughs> we, uh, you know, the, the guy has enough in his body, though, to set off metal detectors when he walks through them. Right. Now, there's so, uh, that's a problem. There, there's a long, long list of uh, conspiracy theories. Uh, we got the top ten from Time as the JFK assassination. Uh, number two is the 9/11 cover-up. Number three, and this uh, goes with the Area 51, yeah, and the aliens. Uh, Paul is dead. Secret societies control the <laughs> world. The moon landing was fake. That's coming up uh, anniversary tomorrow. The fake moon landing. Uh, Jesus and Mary Magdalene, uh, the Holocaust, revisionism, the CIA, and AIDS, and the reptilian elite. So I wonder how many in there are, you know, put in there to uh, make the others look like idiots. And, you know, some are absolutely not uh, provable. But some uh, deserve serious uh, um, 
contention. The 9-11 cover-up, uh, how, how these buildings fell symmetrically. Three of them, all in the same day, never before. And, uh, I mean, hey, they'd put out the demolition business in Vegas if they could uh, <laughs> demo buildings like that with office furniture fires in jet fuel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, not only that, but let's remember this about 9-11. One thing, uh, whether you want to scream it's an inside job or not, uh, here's a guarantee that you can, even if you believe every mainstream theory that's been put out there, because let's remember, most of the evidence was not recoverable to complete the theory of the official story. Um, you know, do we have the bodies of the individuals? Do we have... Uh, the proper evidence to prove that the individuals that they claimed hijacked these planes were even on these planes. In some cases, no. But you know what? Let's not get all down and deep into the forensics of it. Here, here's the thing. I, I can successfully, conclusively, without a question, say this. We were lied to about 9-11, period, full stop. Why do I say that? Um, even if, again, you accept all of the official story. The situation with the EPA afterwards, the situation with Christy Todd Whitman, they lied to the people that were down there about the safety of the air quality. Done. End of story. We know that our executive branch lied about it regarding public statements that stated we had no idea that this kind of thing could occur. We know that provably. You were lied to about 9-11. You could say that all day, and even the most statist of status really shouldn't be able to argue with you. <laughs> right? So that's that. Uh, let's see. As far as Paul is dead, I, I think that's silliness. Uh, <laughs> He's you know, alive, but I that's tell me. you. He's with Elvis <laughs> and Bigfoot. They're partying, man. <laughs> well, you know, might be hanging out with Jim Morrison, too. Uh, <laughs> and I'm hoping Hendrix is there because... You know, I got to speak to the lady that was with him last, <laughs> and, uh, you know, she's got some interesting stories to tell, but but he should be dead, um, and uh, it, it is fascinating that uh, there there are, you know, we, we could go into the Kurt Cobain conspiracy, we could go into, uh, which, which, by the way, I think is actually fairly valid, depending on which version of it you're into, um, you know, and, and that's the thing, when you go to stuff like the moon landing, all right. Um, I think that there's two separate questions here as to whether we've been shown the legitimate film of the time and whether we went to the moon at exactly that time and whether we were not there earlier, actually, <laughs> whether, uh, you know, whether there is a reason why we have not returned since then uh, to the moon and again done anything. Uh, there's a lot of questions that are not answered properly in my estimation but um there you go i mean th th that that's just a mess and i don't claim to be an expert on that so that's that what else area 51 well <laughs> we might very soon have some interesting answers there um because i don't know what the military response might be to a storming of area 51 what do you think i don't know that they'll make it <laughs> how many people are really going to show up Bob I, you know, Lazar, is he still alive? Who? Bob Lazar, he's a big uh, out there in Vegas with. Uh, oh right, right. Uh, oh, what was the guy's name there? At Channel, uh, Las Vegas news station. Um, oh, I forget his name. George Norrie. George Knapp, I believe. Knapp. Yeah, George Knapp. Knapp. Right. Uh huh. Uh, and it was supposedly exposing uh, alien technology in uh, Area 51. But. Yeah, as for what's in Area 51, I mean, you know, who actually knows? And there are actually several facilities around the country that <laughs> have some pretty mysterious things going on at them, uh, you know, outside of Groom Lakes and uh, Gr Groom's, uh, I think it's Groom's Lake and uh, Skunk Works and, uh, you know, all these different interesting installations that uh, have experimental and odd things going on around them. Um, there's plenty of questions to be asked there. Now, you know, it, it's funny because I, I look at things like Antifa and wonder how manufactured it is 
considering uh, they were supposed to have some large rebellion, and uh, nobody showed up for that either. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There, there, there's lots of these uh, fascinating things out there. I I'm wondering uh, how old that time list was, because they didn't have the Q conspiracy on there, did they? No, let me look at the date on this. Uh, must be pretty recent. This is coming up on the uh, 40th. No, well, it might be 10 years old because it's a 50th anniversary, so I don't see a date. Mm, 40th anniversary of what? Yeah, of the uh, moon landing. So, yeah, this was a 10-year-old post, it looks like. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, so it couldn't have possibly included the uh, the Q nonsense. All right. Um, which is a whole bizarre world where they, they brought a lot of things together there. JFK Jr. faked his death in 1999, I guess, uh, and is the head of the Q conspiracy, according to some people, uh, out there whistleblowing and uh, letting you think that uh, somebody who is really a puppet of the establishment is fighting the establishment via the, this mutilated concept of the deep state, which is... Uh, a poorly adopted term from uh, Peter Del Scott's concept of deep political uh, circumstance and deep politics in general uh, uh, via the state. Uh, you know, it, it's it's really interesting to uh, to watch a guy who's supposed to be warring against the state actually continue to support the uh, the gas and oil industry, make sure that the uh, military industrial complex continues uninterrupted uh, in its operations continuously uh, greater arms sales than we've seen in quite a while <laughs> you know wonderful stuff like that but he's fighting the quote deep state end quote yeah. uh, I, I find that hilarious but anyway well I gotta ask you on uh, going to the moon if uh, they landed then there why why are they having trouble doing it again they said they've lost the technology, and this is from a NASA scientist. They, you know, lost. That's hard for me to fathom. Maybe they could. But there's all all sorts of good questions involving uh, any number of these, and then there's some uh, really stupid questions, I guess, also. Uh, the fact is, is it's meant to... Anybody that uh, subscribes to a, a conspiracy theory that's a, a wacko and uh, has no credibility... Uh, you know, a lot of people are drawn that are uh, perhaps in, feel like they've been slighted by the system and uh, more apt to look for something to confirm these uh, beliefs of theirs and, and their struggle for freedom as they see it. Mm. And, and again, you know, as you see from that document which I shared with you, that, that's from 1967, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm. Regarding the, uh, the the CIA discussing this concept. But they also issued memorandums to their assets, which were embedded in mainstream media. Uh, we, we know about this directly. We know about even uh, uh, people that were part of the Warren Commission directing companies like uh, you know CBS and NBC. Uh, CBS is the most glaring, blatant example of it. Um, to utilize certain tactics in order to marginalize individuals that were Warren Commission critics during the time from 1967 to uh, to 1970, certainly, uh, over and over again. Now, why is that happening, Vince, at exactly that time? Do you know? I don't. I don't. It's uh, all part of the uh, Orwellian system that's been set up, the propaganda that's been pumped into people for a very long time. Oh, right, but propaganda and the reason why certain campaigns of propaganda are conducted at particular times have a logic to them as well. Uh, it, it, is, it is always a reaction of the state to put out disinformation because there is a need for it, right? So let me tell you about what was happening in 1967 that the public didn't even know about just yet, but the CIA knew. <laughs> and that is that District Attorney Jim Garrison in New Orleans Parish uh, in Louisiana was conducting an investigation attempting to find individuals who were connected to Lee Harvey Oswald, who were connected to the CIA, who were involved in the assassination, and he's the only individual to have ever brought a trial uh, where he attempted to convict anyone for culpability in the assassination. Now, he was unsuccessful. We know that uh, the JFK movie by Oliver Stone is in part based on the Jim Garrison story, but 
the reality is the investigation was going on as early as 1966, but really started to uh, take shape in 1967, which is why it was necessary to, uh, to discredit and undermine him. And in later documents, you'll find that, uh, you know, the common trope of little green men. You've heard that phrase a lot, yeah, right? Yeah. So if you believe in the Kennedy assassination, you must believe in little green men, too. Uh, I used to hear that as a kid, Vince. I don't know if you did. Yes, I recall. Um, but the, the reason, it, it, it's funny, because it's almost like if you say that, you're taking your marching orders directly <laughs> from the agency who said that uh, you should compare it to, you should put it in the same category as, uh, you, you should uh, deal with it this way. So you, you can look at the tactics and the reactions of the national security state um, here and in other countries to, uh, to discussions like this. Um, you can uh, also account for the fact that, uh, due, due to the fact that there was something called modern contemporary historical literature, which was uh, actually <coughs> created by the guy who uh, wrote the book uh, The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, but, um, you know, really comes into play regarding individuals writing uh, entire books, entire, uh, you know, series of articles related to the Warren Commission, um, related to that investigation, to that assassination. Um, you know, so, so there had to be a pushback to that literature. People like Mark Lane, um, who, you know, I've got my questions about exactly how compromised he was at a certain point, but initially, uh, you know, a radical leftist, essentially, who uh, was challenging the system in general, and uh, the, the Justice Department's reaction was to put him under surveillance, get compromising photographs of him. Uh, the man's dead now, so... Uh, and, and uh, you know, try to undermine his uh, legal practice and, uh, and, and really to harass him in a lot of different ways. Kind of fascinating that uh, in some documents they actually specifically name authors who are simply just writing. And these people, by the way, at the time, were just asking a lot of interesting questions. Uh, like, for instance, in the 26 volumes of, uh, of, of evidence in the Warren Commission, not just the Warren Commission volume that gives you a summation, but uh, why is it that we need a study of Jack Ruby's mother's teeth as a piece of evidence? <laughs> are you serious? I'm not kidding you, it's in there, okay? Um, and, and Mark Lane used to joke that uh, I, I contend that even if Jack Ruby had bitten Lee Harvey Oswald to death, that this would not be a relevant piece of evidence to enter into any investigation. <laughs> That's about and, right. <laughs> but it's true. I think it's in, uh, I, I don't remember which one of the uh, exhibits it's under, but, uh, you know, do, do yourself a favor, go ahead and search for the piece of evidence that is a study of Jack Ruby's mother's teeth in the Warren Commission volumes. It's there. Okay? <laughs> so, you know, it, 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 just saying, there, there's a lot of interesting stuff like that where the 26 <laughs> volumes are loaded with testimony that goes nowhere, uh, conversations that are interrupted, and uh, even when we take a look back and we got a hold of the executive documents and everything else, Here's the fascinating part of it. Everybody calls it the Warren Commission. It's not its proper name. It's, it's named that way because of Earl Warren, who was the Chief Justice of the United States uh, at the time and was uh, uh, sort of, well, you know, jawboned into doing it by uh, Lyndon Johnson directly, by, uh, by, by him basically saying, you know, if we don't have an investigation like this headed by people like you, we may possibly uh, come to nuclear blows with Russia. Um, so, you know, you need to stand up for your country and protect your fellow countrymen and prevent a war is, uh, is the kind of statement that uh, uh, Johnson used against Earl Warren and a couple of Southern senators as well to get them involved. Um, but, but back to it, who do you think was the most active member, mathematically speaking, asking questions, interrupting, directing executive sessions uh, of the Warren Commission Members, Vince. Uh, I guess first I should ask: Do you know who was on the Warren Commission? But uh, but do you know who the most active member was? Just you know, generally. McNamara. Nope. 
McNamara's not on the Warren Commission. No. He's the Secretary of Defense at the time. Okay. Yeah, he was involved, I think, in the conspiracy, absolutely. He, well, he you was, know, McNamara's an interesting study. I, I don't know no. that I would uh, uh, put him as involved in the conspiracy, but he was in a, a position to know a lot more than, uh, than what he reveals. So I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> anyway, a couple of interesting people that are on there. John J. McCloy. Uh, who was the, uh, the the head of the uh, Federal Bank of New York at one point, um, but also was the uh, post World War II Grand Chancellor of uh, West Germany. Uh, a couple of other interesting things the man had done in the past: John J. McCloy. You have uh, Senator Cooper and Senator Russell from the, uh, the there's part of your Southern contingent right there. You have uh, former CIA director at the time, Alan Dulles. You have the uh, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, Earl Warren. You have uh, other people like staffers, like Arlen Specter and all that, um, who was one of the most active investigators, but not a member of the Warren Commission proper. Um, you have Gerald Ford, who would later on become President of the United States, but at the time was simply a representative from the state of Michigan. Um, now, one of those men I just mentioned, is the most active member mathematically during the conduct of business for the Warren Commission. Which which one do you think it is? Well, see, I was thinking somehow Nixon would have been involved in there, but uh, so then I would uh, tend to go towards Ford. You, you know what? Uh, wrong again, but I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, it, it's Alan Dulles. Ah, uh, yeah. The, you know, named, got an Air Force, uh, airport name for him. Hmm. But former head of the CIA who was asked to resign after the uh, Bay of Pigs uh -huh. incident. So this is a guy who had recently uh, you know, been put out to pasture from his job as head of the CIA, along with a bunch of other people, uh, one of them being Earl Cabell, uh, or excuse me, Charles Cabell. Oh, which one was, which brother was which? You know, I, I have a hard time remembering. One of them was the mayor of Dallas, though, and the other was a high-ranking officer in the CIA. Charles and Earl Cabell. In fact, if you go by the federal building when you're leaving Dallas, Texas, and you're on your way to the bus station like I was, you'll look up and you'll see the Cabell Federal Building uh, on the street that, that, that connects directly to the Greyhound station there. But anyway, um, so isn't that interesting that the guy who seemed to be conducting everything behind the scenes was actually the former head of the CIA? Yeah, definitely. Uh, mm. I'm not surprised, though, because it seems to be that's the way things work. But, but you see, to talk about these kind of things makes you a conspiracy theorist, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but, but again, you know, back to that time period, people were questioning uh, this official investigation. Um, in 1968, Ramsey Clark had to impanel people to take a look at the medical evidence again quietly. Uh, but, you know, not a lot was done there. But why did the agency become actively involved in propaganda? People were asking a lot of questions based on the fact that books were published. And the key thing they knew was coming that they had to get out in front of was the Garrison trial, which made international headlines. Uh, he charged a, uh, a guy named Clay Shaw uh, as a, uh, a conspirator, basically. Um, somebody who was conducting or should I say directing Lee Harvey Oswald's movements and things like that behind the scenes and uh, working for the CIA and all that. And you know what they did to Jim Garrison? What did they do? They, they made him out to be a lunatic in a lot of media circles oh. and re-edited things he said. And even NBC uh, put out an entire hour-long program uh, filled with a whole bunch of false information regarding his investigations and mischaracterizations and, uh, you know, alleged witnesses and whistleblowers claiming that he was uh, uh, trying to uh, get them to, to give false testimony and all that. Um, and indeed, we, we know this to be a fact because Garrison took them to court. <laughs> and actually, uh, under what we used to call the Fairness Doctrine, got time on NBC to respond to their inaccurate reporting. Uh, and you can find those things both online, film with both of them at the time. But it's funny 
because when we take a very close look, there were individuals who were communicating with the Central Intelligence Agency that worked for NBC. In 1968, they had released, CBS did, released uh, an entire series of programs backing the Warren Commission's conclusions, alleging that they had created an investigation. We find out later that John J. McCloy and uh, other members of the Warren Commission actually communicated with the producers of that show to guide them <laughs> as to what it was they were going to present. So, you know, the, the, the propaganda works to try and undermine those uh, people that question the official stories, yeah. those people that question uh, uh, criminal events one way or another. Uh, runs rather deep, and again, this is just based on my 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 knowledge of one particular subject area. Right? Uh, we 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 see this all over the place. Everybody's heard of Mockingbird, et cetera, et cetera. So. Oh yeah, that's that's a super long list. From um, mm -hmm. Juan conspiracy. Uh oh, I just jumped on there. Roll back up. A conspiracy theory is meant as a derogatory term to discredit and silence people who are critical thinkers. People who want to question a narrative, and uh, that's uh, uh, was quoted from uh, High Impact's Impact Flicks, uh, Brian over there. I watched that uh, one video uh, that Juan uh, Taco shared earlier. Uh, also, I included into the uh, radio log here some uh, our tunication from Juan Taco and uh, Anti. And here from William Bryant. It says, "Weep not, the world changes. Did it keep?" A stable, changes, changeless state for cause indeed to weep. Kind of summing it up about the uh, conspiracy theories and into the uh, idea of a new world order. The instruments of control are mostly in place and operational. Thanks, Juan Taco. Uh, part yeah. of people's concern is just the sense that around the world, uh, the, let me try that again. Uh, Part of people's concern is just the sense that around the world the old order isn't holding and we're not quite yet uh, sick, I added that in, to where we need to be in terms of a new order that's based on a different set of principles. From uh, President Barack Hussein Obama, July 22nd, 2014, we stand today as a unique and extraordinary moment. The crisis, as grave as it is, also offers a rare opportunity to move towards a historic period of cooperation out of these troubled times. A new world order. George Herbert Walker Bush, September 11th, 1990. <laughs> well, the idea that conspiracy theories and a new world order are part of what's in play of this world seems to be ridiculous to some people. And it seems to be uh, regurgitated time and time again through the mainstream media. Now, of course, you will find some uh, ridiculous uh, theories out there and um, some that are disputable and indisputable. The fact is, things have been being uh, guided along for a very long time on the way the uh, world works with the uh, military-industrial complex and all, all, all parts of that in the banking industry. Uh, uh, AOC didn't even know about what the Federal Reserve was. Uh, Rimner shared that uh, earlier. <laughs> well, well, does she really need to know, actually? How, how about that as a question? Yeah, Considering kinda. the fact that the Federal Reserve is not actually a governmental agency, and she's supposed to be part of the government, so why should she even bother <laughs> to know about it? How about that? <laughs> I, I guess, but she's on some type of financial committee. <laughs> Let me see if I can pull that up somewhere. Well, you know, they're, they're, here, here we go with the jokes again and the names, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the the people that are there to study law know nothing of law. Uh, the, the, the legal committees, right? They don't know what the laws are, even though they're supposed to be responsible for writing them and overseeing them. The, uh, the people that are there for ethics concerns have no ethics. The people that are uh, allegedly part of the financial concerns don't know anything about finance. Um, I'm not surprised, are you? <laughs> no, you know, stock the swamp, you know. Well, yeah, of course. You know, the 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 alleged leader in charge of it all, uh, the 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 big orange man at the circus, you know, uh, he doesn't know how to be a leader either. 
But that's okay as long as he echoes the right sentiment for just enough of the population to uh, convince you that it is of significance and to keep you distracted while, like I said before, business as usual goes on. You know, funny thing about a, a place like Afghanistan, we're still there. <laughs> and uh seems to me as though the big change from W doing what he did and uh, eight years of Obama, and now two plus years of Trump, right? God, it's uh, only been two and a half. It seems like it's been eight years already. Yeah, I I, I, I feel your pain. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and yeah, I know who I just <laughs> quoted. Uh, but but the thing is, gee, we we got out of Afghanistan, didn't we? Gee, we 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 improved uh, things on the planet somewhere, didn't we? You know, even the alleged, uh, well, the, oh, look, the economy's doing so well. For who? <laughs> this is my question. For who? For You're whom? still underpaid. Even yeah. if they give you the $15 an hour minimum wage across the board, it still will take you another $10 an hour to get you up to the level you were at in 1968. Okay, being paid minimum wage as far as your living standard goes. So how is this economy improved, improving, or doing anything? Oh, wait a minute, the price of oil has dropped, hasn't it? Not really. It has for the people that, you know, trade in commodities, but doesn't look like it's gone down all that much at the gas pump. I don't see the prices of anything going down. Matter of fact, every time I go to the grocery store, I do feel like the prices are going up. Seems like everything's got a new tax on it and new hidden fees on it every time I turn around, and nobody does anything about that. <laughs> so, you know... No matter which way you turn, I want to know where the improvement is, where you know where 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 the corporation is not protected among or, or above, I should say, the individual. I want to know where that's at because um, I'd like to see it. Well, I will say that conspiracy theories of fact and the uh, new world order is uh, is an old order that's just uh, re uh, rebranding itself and sharpening some points and uh, honing the edges of others to make it more. Friendly, people friendly for worldwide occupation. Well, right. Look, KRS One, right? He said the New World Order got a facelift, and this time they put a black face on it. That's what he said about Barack Obama being elected, right? We saw that, and I'm paraphrasing, I know. But see, they put an orange face on it, and they tell you it's a white guy, and you're supposed to be calmer now. At least some segment of the population is. And hey, before that, it was a good old boy that you could have a beer with. And before that, it was another good old boy who felt your pain. And before that, it was a responsible adult who was likely running the ship while somebody else went senile in the office. But okay, Jimmy Carter, I'll give a pass to. Gerald Ford's always been a status stooge. You know, how far back we got to go as far as the people that are allegedly at the head of a government that's supposed to be of, for, and by the people, but is actually being run by the highest bidder whether they be a corporation or a nation state. And even if you conclude that uh, the conspiracy of the New World Order uh, is, is, is something that is imagined by some, seems to be pretty palpable when people can communicate across uh, nation state lines, across language barriers and everything else, to consistently crush populations for profit, to consistently profit on all sides of every war we ever see emerge, right? Okay. To consistently allow all this stuff, no matter how much surveillance happens, no matter how much uh, of your rights you're supposed to be giving away, no matter how much of your privacy you surrender, uh, it, it seems as though people get abused and they get no relief from the alleged justice system because, well, if you don't have the cash, you don't have the ability to buy the result you desire, so, tell me something. <laughs> Where is there not evidence, logically, of a conspiracy of individuals who are seemingly at the top of the pyramid, if you will, um, controlling the circumstances by which the majority of us have to endure one way or another, unless you can go completely off-grid, and if you think you own a piece of land, you're mistaken, but you can try to go off-grid onto a piece of land that you think you own, mm -hmm. attempt to utilize things that you believe are yours, all you like, uh, one way or another, the entire planet's on lockdown. Where, indeed, comply or die, what it comes down to in the very end. 
Yeah, I mean, so so why would you not conclude that there is a one, you know, a, a, a single mind in, in a lot of ways, a conspiracy? Oh, wait a minute, people breathing together for their own interests, maybe coming together to control the situation, to control the population one way or another. And indeed, why not give us plenty of things to distract ourselves with? Like Ooh. the continuously, always, evergreen argument over race. Like the continuous, evergreen, always argument over uh, the language, which is really hilarious considering the way the, the English language is utilized. It's a designer thing that contains so many other languages. I'm amazed anyone can speak it sometimes. Um, you know, to, to argue over things like political correctness, and to argue over exactly how offensive something was, instead of actually getting something done, instead of, you know, taking these huge overbloated apparatuses, or apparatuses, not sure which, like the military-industrial complex, and utilizing it for anything other than the greater profits for, wait a minute, those people at the top again. And only, only ingratiating these things for the greater population to perpetuate the system itself. Well, I, I wonder why people think there's a conspiracy of individuals at the top, if those are the prevailing circumstances, Vince. You're right. Well, Chuck, we've, uh, <laughs> we've run up against the hour right here. I appreciate you coming along. I think uh, we've taken a pretty uh, pretty good look at uh, the, the beginnings of where somebody might want to start and rethink this idea that conspiracy th uh, theories are, are wacko. We find them. Right. All right. Well, come back around. J Chuck, uh, you're running five nights a week now. Oh, yeah, for, for the past few years, five nights a week, Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern. And, hey, on Real Liberty Media, there is no Chelly channel last I looked, so you can go there and listen. <laughs> I, hey, thanks, folks. Uh, I got a wheeler pulling up on me out here. I believe if you didn't want ride on by. And, uh, I, hey, check the schedule at reallibertymedia.com. Uh, five nights a week, Chuck O'Chelly. Also at Real Liberty Media. Check them out. Thanks again, Chuck, for coming along. Appreciate you. All right. Thanks, Vince. At least I didn't stay up until 2 a.m. and not come on. So, cool. <laughs> 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 well, holla, man. Thanks. <laughs>